Hey guys, what's up? Long time no post, like really, really, really long time no post. Maybe since I was 19 or 20. For those of you who may not know, my name is Heather. I am a 23 year old artist. I do painting, collage, printmaking, that kind of stuff. And right now I have been working on running an online shop, selling my art. So that's what we're gonna talk about today, actually. Today, I'm gonna be answering some questions I got from my friends on Instagram. And also I will have a full like table of contents below. So if you're looking for a certain topic, you can go ahead and click to that. If you wanna listen to me ramble the whole way along, feel free to grab some work or something to eat and uh, follow along. Let's talk first about why am I making this video? Certainly there are people who are more qualified than me, but I want to share my perspective as someone who just got started, everything is fresh in my brain, and I also want to start a conversation. And so maybe the comment section of this could be like a little forum of information for people who are also starting off with their shop. Anytime throughout this video that you want to share a little bit more information on something I talked about, feel free to put it down below in the comments. So next I want to talk a little bit about why I opened the shop. So over the years throughout university, I was always posting my art online. However, I am like really bad at selling my work. So people would inquire about buying a piece and I would like kind of flub it because I don't know how to talk about money. And I don't know how to ship things. I don't know how selling art works. I would always think, oh, like if only I had a store, it would be a lot easier because there'd already be an interf interface for people to go to to buy work. Like, it's really hard to do when you're in university. Like, I don't know how people do anything else when they're in university. I don't even know how I did it. Like there was one semester I was working two part-time jobs. Hello, I don't, I could not do such a thing now in my life. So yeah, so once I graduated, I also lived in Japan for a year. So that would have made everything to do with taxes and shipping so much worse. So I waited till I'm back here. And now thanks to um, lovely coronavirus, I am, not very employed so i have plenty of time to focus on it so if you're in a similar position to me and you're looking to get started with the shop here's some information i will share with you so the first thing you're going to need for your shop obviously i think is artwork so you can go through old artwork that you have already made if you're anything like me and that's very overwhelming maybe start off with looking at what's popular online so what gets a lot of engagement from people who follow you or maybe what have people been asking for prints of start with there it doesn't have to be super complicated i would say probably my biggest tip for starting a shop is start with what's easy to sell so this is going to be things that are in the price range of your audience and things that are easy to produce, cheap to produce, so you don't have any huge upfront investment like a printer or a Cricut, which can be a little risky if you don't know uh, what direction you're going in yet. And another big thing is like, do you know how to ship it? Do you know how to package it? Or maybe that's an easy one for you guys. I don't know. For me, that was the hardest one. I was like, sure, I have like a ton of giant paintings, but I have no idea how to ship that. So like, let's not start with that. Another option you have would be to create new work. So this may seem counterproductive, but I think it could actually help you. And this is what I did. So I created a couple different lino cut prints that I knew I could produce for a price that was not underpaying myself and was still affordable within the range of my audience, which is mostly people my own age. So like, I'm trying to think like, mm, how much would I spend on my friend's artwork? and tried to make something within that budget. So rather than underselling yourself on the work you, you already have, maybe hold on to that and make a product that you can sell easily to your friends. Another idea would be to make a design for a specific item that people can use. People are looking for things they can either decorate with or things they can use in their daily life. So maybe things like mugs, tote bags, keychains, stuff like that. But keep it simple. Don't do not do something super expensive. I made some tote bags, they're pretty cheap. On that note, sourcing your items. I used Tote Bag Factory. It was very affordable and pretty good quality. That's a good tip is to buy in bulk. So another thing a lot of people are looking to get for the shop is prints. So I got a question about this actually, and I wanna talk a little bit about what I do. So I order from Cat Print. It's a website, they do 
all different kinds of printing, but I really like their artist prints. I think they're very reasonable quality for the price and they offer a ton of different finishes. You can order like a little sample book about the different types of paper and they'll send you that and normally there'll be a coupon in there too. Um, and so what I do is I order large 11 by 17 or 12 by 18 sheets of paper and then I will make a template for myself in Photoshop and put a bunch of different pieces on one page. So maybe I'll have nine of the same postcard on one page or like each half of the page will be a larger print. That way I can save on printing costs because they are not cutting it. It's a little bit cheaper to order. Then of course, someone has to cut it. So once you get the prints, you will spend some time cutting them. So it's definitely a little bit of more of a time investment. But if you're like me and you have the time, but not the money, that's a good option. Obviously there are also local print options. I can't answer for where you are. I don't actually know any here in New Jersey, but if you're in Philly, Fireball Prints is pretty good. Yeah, support your local print shops if you can, and if not, there are plenty of online options as well. So the next thing to talk about would be registering your business. So I am not a tax professional. I'm not really any kind of professional, so take this with a grain of salt, but just to give you some guidance on where you can start looking. As an artist, you're owning your own business, so you would either be a sole proprietorship or an LLC, but honestly most people are probably going to end up wanting to register as sole proprietorship. It's much cheaper. You pretty much just have to register, which doesn't cost anything in most places as far as I know and then you will just pay your taxes on a regular 1099 like any other freelancer. It's pretty simple. An LLC is a limited liability corporation. This is more for if you have an employee or if you have liabilities. I don't know. I don't know where that comes into play with artists. Probably for most people like selling prints online that wouldn't be a big issue but basically you'd have a little more protection for your own personal assets rather than a sole proprietorship. Your business and your personal assets are all like one. With an LLC See, there are some fees to start it and there are, are different tax procedures. In some cases it's really not worth it to register as an LLC because of the fees. You won't really get the tax benefits but if you are somehow starting off, I don't know why you'd be watching this video, you're starting off making a ton of money. Um, an LLC might be something good to look into because the pro about an LLC is that you can pay yourself a salary, a reasonable wage, and anything above that to pay yourself as a bonus, which gets taxed differently. That's the benefit as far as I understand, but if you're anything like me, you do not earn anywhere near that much, so sole proprietorship is the way to go. The next and most obvious step, I think, is to start a website. You have different options for this. You can use a service like Etsy or you can start your own website. I personally don't have an Etsy, but as far as I know, an Etsy can be a really good way to start out because you're getting lots of new eyes on your work and also pretty low initial investment on your part. However, with that come a lot of fees from Etsy and also you have to deal with a lot of competitions. While the search feature can be in your favor, it can also be against you. If people are going there to check out your work and then getting distracted by your competitors. So the other option, which is what I do, is to host your own website. Something like Squarespace, Wix, Shopify is a good one. I've also heard a lot of good things about Big Cartel. So those are some different options to look into. I decided to use Squarespace just because I already had a subscription and I already have my website hosted on Squarespace because of my art portfolio. So it was really easy to integrate a shop into that and it looks super cohesive and it's the same really easy user interface. My one problem with Squarespace is you can't change the shipping options per item. So I have some difficulty setting up my shipping sometimes. That's really the only issue I've encountered with Squarespace. So in listings on your website, you're gonna want an image of your work. I personally take most of my photos with my phone and I'll just make sure there's good lighting and a good backdrop. But if you're documenting original work, especially before you send it off, you want to take a nice high quality image on a DSLR camera. That way, if in the future you want to make prints or you want to include it in a portfolio or anything like that, you have a high quality image. Maybe I can do a video on how to take good art photos, but in the meantime, hire your photographer friends. I'm sure they will do your art plenty of justice. Other things to include on your listing would be the dimensions of the piece, maybe any details about how it's going to ship. Will it be wrapped in plastic? Will it be in a plastic sleeve? Uh, is there anything the customer needs to know? Is sh international shipping really expensive for the item? Also maybe things like if it's a two-dimensional piece, are there elements that stick out that might not fit in the frame? Those are just things I like to consider. The next portion of what I'm going to talk about is shipping. 
shipping for me for whatever reason is like the biggest nightmare. I just can't seem to wrap my head around it. And it doesn't help that it seems like every time I go to the post office, the rules are like slightly different. I don't know the deal, but I'm gonna tell you guys what I know about the US Postal Service right now in late 2020. So if you're not from the US, you're not currently late 2020. First of all, I hope I hope you're in a better place right now than we are. Maybe you can skip to the next section. So right now, there are three different ways to send things. Letter mail, large envelope, or package mail. Letter mail is gonna be for small things, like little artist prints, postcards, maybe small lino prints. This is good, because it's really cheap to stick a stamp on there, um, but it's bad because it could get lost. There's no tracking. Take your risk. For me, I like to do this for things that I can easily replace. It's cheap, it keeps cost low for the customer. If I do eventually have to replace a print or two, it's not gonna break the bank. However, there are definitely some restrictions to what you can send as a letter. Um, I see people trying to send all kinds of crazy things as a letter with just like one stamp. It will get sent back to you. <laughs> so it can't be thicker than a quarter of an inch. If it's more than one ounce, it needs extra stamps. It has to be within a certain size range. I'll post there's like a diagram of that and it has to be like a certain ratio. It can't be square because then they can't put it in the machine. So then that's also an extra fee. There's also large envelopes, which is pretty much the same thing except slightly larger larger dimensions. For both of these, you cannot send rigid mailers, which I found out the hard way. So rigid mailers are not included in either of these options. So rigid mailers have to go as package mail. I have sent some as large envelopes, but I have been told that is not allowed. Someone at the post office let me do it. Anyway, package shipping is your most common type for rigid mailers. Most things in a poly bag or box. Uh, USPS first class parcel mail does have tracking, so any package will have tracking. The only reason to upgrade your shipping is if you want it to get there faster. I do have that option for customers. However, I think most people will prefer to save the money as long as they have tracking to know where their package is at. I don't wanna ramble about shipping forever, so if you have any specific questions, put them below and we can chat about it in the comments. The next thing we're gonna talk about is packaging, which is super important. I try to be as eco-friendly as possible while also considering cost and how well it's gonna protect my work. So I use a really wide range of packaging, but I would say as a general rule, try to buy in bulk whenever you can. Try to stay away from plastics. There are some like compostable plastics. And I use some of those and things, but I'm not sure the science behind that is really that robust. Like, I don't know how it holds up to actually being compostable. The average person's compost, I don't know. I'm not a scientist. In general, I find pretty decent products from Eco and Clothes and No Issue. They're not the cheapest, but they have good eco options. They don't make them large, but I've been trying to use glassine bags for some of my smaller prints. Along with packaging is what's inside the package. So obviously you'll have your product inside, but what other items are you adding in there? So I would advise you stay away from like gimmicky stuff like giving away candy or giving away like little plastic toys. I see people on TikTok doing that and like it's just not sustainable and you have no idea if your customer is going to enjoy that or not. And it's going to raise the shipping so I really recommend just leaving that kind of stuff out. Keep it simple. A business card is always good. It should have your name, your <laughs> email, your social media and I really want to add a QR code. I forgot to this time um, but there's lots of places to do them online. I designed mine on Canva and then I got them printed with Got Print and I got 500 for 15 bucks so pretty good deal. And what I like about mine is that the front is glossy and the back is matte so I can jot a little personalized thank you note on the back. Another great addition is some kind of thank you card. I personally use a lino stamp that I made a while back or you can just order a little postcard size prints from wherever you get your prints for your business cards and include that as well. One of the things I think is important to me is to make the experience of opening the package feel like receiving a gift. So I like to really carefully package everything, use fun like washi tape, colored pens, tissue paper, things like that that are sustainable but still make it like a fun experience to open. So the last thing to talk about would be freebies. I try to keep it pretty minimal like I'll normally do something like a little tiny artist print or postcard or like a lino cut print. Additionally if people have bought a lot of stuff from my shop I'll look through what they bought and add something in that I think that they will like just as a way of thanking them for buying so much. But yeah I really enjoy giving freebies it kind of adds to the aspect of of uh, receiving a gift. 
the last topic and maybe the most important is marketing your work aka how the heck do i find customers this could be an entirely different portion if we were not in corona times however there's no such thing as art markets right now well there are some digital ones but i don't really know much about that so we're not gonna go there we're just mainly gonna talk about social media today so i actually got a question about this so this will hopefully answer your question at least how i approach it i pretty much try to approach it from a marketing perspective so i follow a lot of people who are like content creators or create content for other people who share like marketing advice because there are certain tricks and tips to beating the algorithms that are against you if you're not a big corporation. If you're an artist, you're probably already on Instagram. I think Instagram is really valuable not because the algorithm is getting you any growth, but it continues to connect you to the people who have supported you. I think that that's really your core audience. So you need to advertise to them because they're probably the most likely to buy something from you. Show them what's coming, keep them updated on the process, share things on stories, maybe even make a countdown to your shop update. Obviously you wanna post on the day of, to let people know that your shop is open and then you can continue posting as you go that way people just get a little reminder sometimes i know from my personal shopping habits like i'll see someone's shop open go look at it get distracted and then two days later i'll see another post and be like oh yes let me go finish making that order just be consistent and try different things out so i know right now instagram is really pushing reels so if you're making video content at all put it on reels get it out there so you've got Instagram, another good thing to do would be posting on Facebook. I don't know if people are really getting a lot of growth on Facebook these days as like independent artists, but you're gonna wanna let your family and friends know because they're probably gonna be the first customers from your shop and there's nothing wrong with that. Let them know, let them support you and give you that boost of confidence when you start off. So posting on Facebook is good too. And if you make a Facebook profile just for your shop or like you as an artist, you can connect that to Instagram and that will help you have certain business features on Instagram as well. We have Instagram, we have Facebook. The last thing I'm gonna talk about today is TikTok. For any of you who know me in real life or follow me online, you know I've been very into TikTok lately, but for a good reason, because TikTok is one of the few places where the algorithm is still kind of in the favor of the small creator. So it's still relatively easy to get growth on TikTok. It definitely does require consistency. I post every day, at least every day. You have to kind of learn how to make a good video. You want to keep it short, keep people's attention. Some stuff you can post on TikTok is work in progress videos of things you are currently working on. You can post the final product or you can post little shop things like packaging orders or a little day in the life of how you run the shop, going to the post office, things like that. People really like to see that behind the scenes kind of stuff. One thing about TikTok that I will say is that conversion is definitely much lower than on Instagram because most of the people TikTok shows your video to are new viewers so they're not like longtime supporters that are ready to buy your art. Normally I try to have the product already available when I'm sharing it on TikTok in case it does get a lot of traction so that people can immediately be converted to sales if they are interested. And number two would be having like a, a more affordable product on your website very clearly displayed so if someone does click through to your TikTok and then clicks through to your to, sh to your shop there's something cheap that that's easy to get them to buy so I find that a lot of the sales I get from TikTok are people buying something small like a postcard. All right so that is pretty much all I have for today. I say pretty much as if that was short. I rambled quite a bit. I hope I did not bore you to death. But if you found anything useful in this video, give it a little thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget, if you have anything to add, add it down below. Hopefully we can have a nice little resource for anyone who watches this video in the future. So yeah, thank you guys so much. I will see you in the next video. Bye!